what's going on? Welcome back to episode 4 of the Pokemon Infinite Fusion Hardcore Nuzlocke. We're going to be starting today with some cleanup and some fusions. One of my favorite forms of fusions I've seen is fusing two of the same Pokemon. So Trash 2 and Trash 3 are the first to be fused to create the ultimate Trubbish. And next up it's finally time to fuse our starter. Who better than a recently evolved Sushi to fuse with? We fuse Subscribe and Sushi to make Garameleon. With our episodic fusions out of the way, let's cast our minds back to episode 1. We made it out of Iridian Forest and into Pewter City, where this old man gave us a side quest. Side quests are cool. Yep, we're gonna do some side quests because as it turns out, they have some great rewards. I didn't show them on screen, but during my episode 3 recording, I got a pickaxe that negated the need for Rock Smash and the Flash HM as a reward for doing quests. Each major city has a hotel, and each hotel has guests staying at it who all have side quests. This video won't be all side quests, but there will be important things gathered via these side quests that you don't want to miss. But if you do want to miss it, we'll make story progress in just a few moments. Our first side quest was from this old man in Pewter City, so we get flowers per his request. Pink flowers in Route 2, red flowers in Route 3, and blue flowers in Route 4. Gathering all the flowers made the garden's Oracorio very happy, and it decided to come with us. I nicknamed it Rainbow since it changed colors with the flowers we brought. I battled this guy to get bricks to take to the building site in Vermilion, and his battle was the cause of Glulit to evolve into Glutrio. While still in Pewter City, I start the process of reviving fossils, while a scientist gives me a quest to get back the old amber she lost to a horde of beedrills in Vermilion Forest. You may mess up at your job, but at least you haven't messed up this bad. Leaving the museum, I find a trainer's Lost Revive and give it back to him. What a noob. Not even doing a Nuzlocke. Imagine needing revives. Get good, rookie. On Route 2, I help this old man garden his very mistreated yard, and he gives me shears, which replace the need for the Cut HM. Back in Viridian City, I battle this person for wood planks for the Vermilion construction site. Going back north through the Viridian Forest, I collect mushrooms for one side quest and meet up with the scientists for another. I take out the Beedrill who are just living their life, collect the old amber, and we go back to Pewter City. My fossils were ready for pickup, and I received Ammonite and Anorith, who I named Lord Helix and IDK Man, respectively. I hand over the mushrooms I collected in the forest and receive a bomb mushroom. Heading over to Cerulean City, I find a breeder that I give a love letter to. Not from me, I'm married, thank you very much, but from one of the weird hotel trainers. He gives me love balls for completing his request. Wait a minute, love letter? To a breeder. For love balls. I'm keeping my mouth shut. Form your own opinion in the comments. In the Cerulean Pokemon Center, Professor Oak's aide gives me the experience share for fusing Pokemon five times and gives me another side quest where I need to catch an Abra where I've already caught a Pokemon, and why does nobody respect the integrity of a Nuzlocke in this game? Finally back in the Vermilion Hotel, I show off my newly fused starter, which fulfills the side quest of showing off a fire water type Pokemon. And on my way out of the city, I turn in the bricks and planks in exchange for a rocky helmet. Those are all the side quests I can currently do, so we now return to your normally scheduled Nuzlocke. Heading east of Cerulean and into Route 9, we start obliterating the trainers occupying the route but more importantly, our Route 9 encounter. The first encounter was a Nido Tata, who is against the rules. Our next encounter is a female Nidoran, who I catch and nicknamed Jet. After taking out all the trainers in Route 9, we head into Route 10 for our next encounter, Zubat. Ignoring that, we actually have early access to the power plant, so we head in and get an encounter there, which is Voltorb. Voltorb gets the nickname Stan. Straight in the rock tunnel for yet another encounter, Mankey. Even though she's a female, I knew what I needed to do as soon as I saw her. I nickname her The Man and fuse her with Stan to make Voltki, or as I call her, Stan the Man. Heading through rock tunnel and there's once again a bunch of trainers to fight. Nothing of too much note in Rock Tunnel except I get another strange prism. Got out of Rock Tunnel without too much trouble and into Lavender Town. 
I kind of just skip past Lavender Town for now and head west into Route 8 for the next encounter. We come across a Meowth, who I nickname after my own cat, Miso. I go through another part of the Kanto Underground and end up in Route 7 for another encounter. It's a Vulpix. By this point, I've caught so many things in this recording, I was tired of nicknaming things. So I asked my wife for a nickname, and she names Vulpix Scrat, after the squirrel from Ice Age. We're in Celadon City now. I get my encounter in this building. It's a dig toe. I cannot use it. It's the dev of Pokemon Infinite Fusion and I know my name. I'm famous. They must be subscribed to me. I go to get my free Eevee, but guess what? It's someone else's Eevee. They do ask me to take it for a walk until it's exhausted as a side quest though. I didn't even make it out of the building before Eevee became exhausted. I go to drop Eevee back off, but she just gives me the Eevee. Thanks, I guess. I ask my wife for another nickname, but she couldn't figure out what the neighborhood squirrels from Fred were named. So I saw a bottle of ibuprofen near me, and I named Eevee Ibuprofen. I'm somewhere I shouldn't be again. Team Rocket is running a black market for Fuse Pokemon, but Fuse Pokemon are against the rules, so I didn't buy anyone today. Team Rocket's blocking all the sewers. No Team Rocket base in the game corner. Erica's gym is locked. What is a wow Shane to do? What else besides head into Route 16 for a new encounter? It's another Spiro. Spring again. Being on Route 16, I realized I never got my bike for the bike path. So I flew back to Cerulean City with my new Fly HM and picked up the bike using the bike voucher that I got from the Pokemon fan club president in Vermillion. And since I had nothing to do in Celadon apparently, I flew back to Lavender Town and entered the Pokemon Tower. Dare John was already there to battle me again. He leaves with an evolved Nidoto. Ice Fang takes Nidoto past half health and Chip Away did nothing to subscribe. John accuses a Super Potion, but this battle is already won. Ice Fang again past half, another Super Potion, another Ice Fang past half, and one more to take out Nidoto. Starbra comes out next and I switch into Trash. Trash outspeeds and one shots with Crunch. Warsaw is next and I swap into Seed for some reason. Rapid Spin and Bubble do basically nothing to Seed and two Giga Drains take Warsaw out of the battle. The rival's last Pokemon is Gyarados and I swap into Stand the Man. Two Sparks knock out Gyarados like it was nothing. Note how John Derrick didn't have Manicate in this battle, which means in this game, he killed two Pokemon. After the battle, we hear a ruckus happening near us. Come on, tell us how to make the Master Ball. You were working at Sylphco when it was being developed. We know you have the plans. Let's go, we have ways to make you talk, old man. They take the old man upstairs. Derek John tells me he won't help because he's afraid of ghosts. I tried to give chase, but the ghost kicked me out right away. Not much else left to do, so... We're going back to Celadon. I go to see if the gym is open yet, but nope. There's good old Rival, who I'm running out of creative ways to spin both of his names trying to get into the sewers. He forces the rocket grunts into the sewers and tells me that the old man in the Pokemon Tower was Mr. Fuji. He goes to look for the Rocket headquarters in Celadon City, blatantly ignoring the fact that the Rocket grunts retreated into the sewers. Erica finally wakes the hell up and comes out of her gym to see what the commotion is. We tell her what Team Rocket is up to, and she comes with us into the sewer to help us out. The sewers are full of grunt battles, which are all double battles with Erica as our teammate. Think of Eternal Forest in Sinnoh. In between all of the Rocket battles, we get our sewer encounter, and we have a choice. I regrettably chose Grimer, regrettably because I already have multiple poison types. Anyway, his name is Slim Jim. No clue why I named him that. I like Slim Jims. They're alright. We progress our way through the sewers, raising and lowering the water, super gross, and battling rocket grunts, somehow grosser, until we find the hideout. There's a split path. Erica goes right and I go left, spinning floor puzzles and rocket grunt battles beyond the door. Before we can make it out of the room, Stan the Man evolves into Voltape. And we're finally on the other side, and it turns out Erica beat us there. Wow, I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything, he was just too strong. So I must say, I am impressed you got here too. 
It is noble of you two to worry for that old man in the Pokemon Tower, but he got what he deserved for standing in the way of Team Rocket. You see, Team Rocket captures Pokemon from around the world. They're important tools for keeping our criminal enterprise going. I am the leader, Giovanni. For your insolence, you will feel a world of pain. He sends out Arnix first, who I Aqua Tail past half HP. Arnix Acid sprays back, which hardly does anything. Another Aqua Tail knocks it out. Next, Giovanni sends out Ryrus. I swap in the seed. Seed shoots out a Leech Seed, and Ryrus returns with a stomp that takes around one third HP. Then Giga Drain knocks out Ryrus. Seed wins, lol. Giovanni's last Pokemon is Honkan, who Seed stays in for. It sucker punches and fails. I Leech Seed and miss. It sucker punches and fails. I leech seed and hit. Noticing it's only going for sucker punches, I take time to set up gross while healing off of leech seed. Until it hits me with confuse ray. And of course we hit ourselves in confusion with boosted attack stats. I cannot take the chance of losing seed, so I swap into trash. Honkan tries to hit with shadow ball, but it doesn't affect trash. Trash gets confuse raid, of course, and hits herself. Of course. Sucker Punch finally hits and it's a crit. This is not going well, but we finally push through Confusion, Crunch, and beat the leader of Team Rocket. I see that you raise your Pokemon with the utmost care. A child like you would never understand what I hope to achieve. I shall step aside this time. I hope we meet again. Giovanni disappears and Erica comes to speak with us. Whew, I'm lucky you were here. I never could have did it without your help. Thank you, Wow. This Sylph scope that Giovanni left behind. I think it helps to see ghost Pokemon. With this, you'll be able to go save Mr. Fuji on top of Pokemon Tower. Okay then, I will be heading back to my gym. You should come challenge me there sometime. I pick up the Sylph scope and take a look around find top secret notes. Triple Fusion Experiment Notes. Although the process still requires a tremendous amount of energy, the Triple Fusion prototype now appears to be fully operational. Furthermore, the cause of the Mount Moon experiment's failure had now been identified. Unlike regular fusion, it appears that the Pokemon need to be of a similar strength and energy signature. Failing to do so results in a fusion that is too unstable to be viable. It is speculated that the energy requirement could be lessened by using it on Pokemon of greater power. The three legendary birds of Kanto seem like strong candidates for this experiment. However, these Pokemon are notoriously difficult to capture and living specimen have only been seen a few times in the recent years. I got the hell out of there and into the gym. Let me peel back the curtain a little bit. Every other episode was about one hour of recording. This one was three. I should have realistically stopped, but I love this series, so here we are. However, I was extremely tired by this point, so I probably, regretfully, skipped all but the one required gym trainer. The one required gym trainer had a weeping duo. And from this one gym trainer battle, Stan the Man reached her final form, and she is now Electrape. We make it up to Erica, and Seed's gym streak has been broken, as unfortunately her grass type moves wouldn't do any help in this battle. We take in Subscribe, Sprite, and Trash. Erica leads with Exeguiduo, as we lead with Subscribe. Subscribe used Fire Fang for about 3 quarters HP, and Exeguiduo hit back with a pitiful fury attack. Erica withdraws Exeguiduo, and sends out Tanape. Fire Fang takes about half HP. Erica uses a Hyper Potion, and this fight is ours. Another Fire Fang. Tanape is past half HP. Tanape goes for Seismic Toss, which takes 33 HP before Fire Fang takes Tanape out. Erica sends back out Exeguiduo. I know we outspeed, and we can take it out. So Subscribe stays out to Fire Fang and take out Exeguiduo. Erica's Ace is next to come out, and it's Vile Bell. I outspeed and go for Fly. Vile Bell misses Poison Power. Fly hits for over half HP which causes Vile Bell to eat its Citrus Berry. Vile Bell then starts charging energy for Solar Beam, 
but I know I outspeed. I go for Fly again, which causes Violbell to miss Solar Beam. Fly connects and takes out Violbell, netting us our fourth gym badge, and we're officially halfway through the Kanto Gym Challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the next upload. I'm bound to lose a Pokemon eventually, right? You'll want to be subscribed so you don't miss that. See you next time!